Hi, and welcome to Mic Drop, where I'm going to help you ace your next audition. So today we're going to talk about an extremely important topic, which is taking care of your voice. It's a unique thing. Your instrument is part of your body. And we all know that the human body can go through ups and downs. You know, one week you might be on top of the world, you're singing great, and then you catch laryngitis. And uh, you can barely speak at all. So it's a living instrument. It's not like a violin or a piano, you know, that they can't catch a cold and not play for you. So it's really especially important uh, if you're singing a lot that you make sure that you're taking care of your voice in the best way possible. So the ground rule is to hydrate. That's the first line of defense. Drinking plenty of water before, during, and after singing, especially when you're practicing or, or performing for a, a long time, is going to help keep everything nice and lubricated in your throat, your vocal cords, and it's going to help reduce any strain or damage to your vocal cords. Uh, I always say if you uh, if you know that you're going to be singing for a long time, start early, earlier in the day, a couple hours before. It sometimes takes a little while for that water to kind of be incorporated into your body. So start then, bring a water bottle to sip on if you can, and afterwards, of course, replenish that as well. And I uh, another thing I'll say about drinking is uh, caffeine and other carbonated drinks can sometimes do a number on your throat. So I, I have a hard and fast rule that if I've got a performance in a coming day, I do, uh, later in a day, I avoid that stuff completely. Caffeine uh, can have a drying out effect. So probably something you want to avoid uh, when you have a performance coming up or you know that you're going to be practicing for a long time. You also want to avoid other things that can irritate your voice. Exposure to pollution, of course, like, you know, you don't want to be around a place where there's a lot of irritants in the air. Cigarette smoke, you, know, you don't want to hang out in a smoky place and then try to sing. That's really going to irritate your voice. And really just uh, where the air is super dry, if you're breathing really, really dry air for a long time, you're going to have to offset that with taking in more water. Now we have the, the concept of vocal hygiene, and that means what are you doing with your voice? <laughs> if you're, you go to a concert and you're yelling and screaming, and even if you're whispering, whispering is also kind of hard on your voice. So you don't want to do it for an extended period of time. So if you know that, for example, you're going to be speaking to a group of people, uh, see if you can get some amplification. Get yourself a microphone so that you don't have to yell to be heard. And uh, actually even speaking and singing with good posture can help there be less strain on the voice. Because if you're kind of slumped over and you've got things are uh, uh, kind of tense there, that's not going to help. Giving yourself plenty of time to rest, so that vocal rest is super important. Take regular breaks while you're practicing, and then like after you're done with a big long performance, don't talk for a little while. Try to avoid talking or singing. There's a lot of power in just giving it a rest. And if you, you see, oh, I'm getting hoarse, things are not looking so good, you know, the next day wake up and say, make, a, make yourself a little sign or something, say, I'm on vocal rest, please don't. Don't talk to me. Send me a text. <laughs> and that actually can really, really help heal things and let things work themselves out. It's also a really good idea to warm up your voice before you do a lot of uh, big singing. Uh, it's a good idea just to, to put your voice through the paces, just like an athlete would warm up. You can even cool down when you're done by doing some light humming, some light lip trills, things like that can help either warm up or then cool down your voice afterwards. Now, I will say if something persists for a long time, or you're just having a hard time producing sound like you used to, or it's just really irritated over a long, longer period of time, there are some times where you need to seek professional help. Go see an ear, nose, and throat doctor. 
people can develop uh, nodes on their vocal cords, which need to be surgically removed. And if you don't do that, you risk uh, injuring your vocal cords even further. So if you suspect that there's something else wrong with your voice that's not clearing up within a week or two, or um, you know, after you've taken good care of your voice and hydrated and done vocal rest and all these things, go see a doctor about it. All right, so those are all good things that are gonna help you keep your voice healthy so that you can audition well. So uh, unfortunately, sometimes you get to the day of the, the audition and your, your voice just isn't there. You know, it's not worth it to, to, to push it beyond its limits. Do your best or just try to reschedule or to say, you know what, it, this one's just not gonna work out. But uh, pushing your voice when it's strained and tired uh, is a recipe for causing further damage. So I really recommend against that if you if you can at all avoid it. All right, you know what to do. Now go out there, drop that mic, break a leg.